In this video I'm going to talk you through how you can download and install the W3 Total Cache plugin. The W3 Total Cache plugin is designed to help your WordPress blog site load a lot quicker than it does just in the default settings. A couple of points that you need to bear in mind because the W3 Total Cache plugin can be a bit tricky to install and to set up couple of things you need to bear in mind. First and foremost you must make sure that any other caching plugins that you have on your blog have been deactivated and deleted. Otherwise you're going to run into compatibility problems when you actually try to enable this particular plugin. So you want to make sure that all traces of any other caching plugins that you have have been completely removed from your server. The second thing is you must make sure that the permissions on your .ht access file are set to 755. You can also set them to 777 but I don't recommend it especially if you're on a shared hosting package. What you're able to do with the W3 Total Cache plugin is going to vary depending on what type of hosting account you have. If you're on a shared hosting account then your options are going to be somewhat more limited than if you have a dedicated server or a VPS. I'm on shared hosting and so I'm going to talk you through the settings for those in this video. Okay let's go over to the dashboard and come down to plugins and add new. and I'm going to search for the W3 total cache and there we go this is the one that we want W3 total cache by Frederick Towns and at the time that I'm making this video the current version is 0.9.2.4 OK, click on Install Now and then click on OK and there we go, that's installed. Now click here to activate the plugin and it says Plugin Activated. OK, now we need to adjust the settings so coming down here to W3 Total Cache and then click here on Settings. You may get this error here, Page Cache URL Rewriting is not working. I'll talk you through how to sort this out. This is a very common problem. First thing you want to do is get rid of Preview Mode so that you are actually making the changes. So what we're going to do is click here on Deploy and there we go. Okay, first and foremost to make sure that you can actually run it on your site you want to perform a compatibility check so click here on that button there and you can go through and you can see if there are any problems you can see it shows what's installed and what's non-installed and so on and you're going to need to perhaps get in touch with your web hosting company if there's something vital that's not been installed on there okay so we'll click on close now on page cache you will find that the default setting is disk enhanced if you're on a shared hosting package. If you're on a dedicated or virtual server you can see there are some other options available. It says that disk enhanced is best but as you can see from the error message I'm not able to do that on my server so if I click on disk basic 
and then click on Save All Settings. There we go, you can see that error message has gone away now. Okay, let's disable preview mode altogether. That might work better. There we go, and again, we're getting this error message once again, so I'm going to go ahead and change that back to Disk Basic and then save all settings. There we go. Okay, it's up and running there now. Next thing is Minify. Now, Minify, according to this, it reduces load time by decreasing the size and number of CSS and JavaScript files, and it automatically removes unnecessary data from CSS files. And it says that it will decrease the file size by about 10% on average. Some shared hosting companies and some shared hosting packages and unfortunately that includes the one that I'm also running uh, will generate an error if you put that on. If I just demonstrate here you can see that does not work on my hosting so I'm going to keep that turned off for this demonstration. So we'll turn that off. Um, if you are able to use Minify then the default settings are perfectly adequate. OK, let's go down a bit further. You want to enable database cache and the database cache method should be disk. For object cache oops, you want to enable that and again keep the object cache method as disk and you also want to enable browser cache. CDN I'm not using on this particular account I don't have an account set up with uh, a CDN provider a content distribution network provider. If you do then you will have an account with them and then what you can do let's just uh, save the settings for the moment and I'll show you in the more detailed uh, settings you can enter all the information about your uh, host attachments and so on in here but as I don't have that I'm not going to cover that in this video let's go back to general settings again okay now go a bit further Varnish I'm not going to use, although if you do have a uh, Varnish server you would enter the IP addresses in there. If you have Cloudflare then you enter all the information and the API key and so on in here and so on. Under miscellaneous the default settings are fine if you're on shared hosting I wouldn't enable file locking and all the others are all okay. Make sure that debug modes is off so that none, none of these are selected and if you have it set up on one blog what you can do is import and export the configuration so that you can upload it easily onto your next blog so you don't have to set this up manually every time on every single blog that you have. So I'm going to save all settings and there we are that's updated and then click there to empty the page cache and there we go that's all set up. 
there are other settings if I just scroll down a bit you can see you generally don't have to worry about these the default settings will work just fine on most hosting packages and now if I go to the blog you can see that's all set up now if I just log out that's it and if I go to the blog page as a non signed in user you can see how quick it loads now compared to the way it did before so there you go that's how you can install and configure the W3 cache plugin.